what's going on guys don't start here i'm back for another wee graphql video today it's going to be, be about caching on your graphql server on the edge layer but thanks a lot to alexi zokov who made this contribution to the open source um, i've been using it lots on the, our platform and actually in some private projects i use it as well so what this code actually does is or what we're going to be doing is for the user request to come in to the GraphQL server with the GraphQL queries, well, what we can do is take the query or parts of a sub part of the query and combine that with the HTTP request headers to actually cache a user's query or cache a query that's used by one user to be provided for another user. So it's fully controllable. You can do what you want. And it's kind of an alternative to caching on your GraphQL data layer where that's actually cached at the resolvers when they actually execute this is brought to the start of the GraphQL execution. So that's why we call it caching at the edge layer. It's right at the beginning when it enters your network. So again, thank you very much for the contribution. It is really, really cool, Alexi. And uh, yeah, enjoy the views here. Welcome back guys. And let's get stuck into the code here. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be coding live in IntelliJ and feel free to follow along and open up your code and, and let's code together. But if you can't be bothered doing that, then please just come ahead, go to the GitHub here and just go and grab the code here. And you can just run the code base, fork the code base, whatever you want to do and just piece this together. No worries, whatever you prefer. But let's go ahead and dive into the code and I'll explain a bit behind this, this uh, functionality of caching. First thing we want to do is actually go and grab a dependency called caffing. Uh, and that's actually not required for the caching, but I am going to use that as my actual caching implementation behind the scenes. So I'm going to delegate to this caffing cache from the GraphQL cache, if you know what I mean. And that'll make sense in a, in a minute. So what we want to do first is actually go ahead and look and see what is going on here. And the most important class that we're going to look at is actually this GraphQL response cache manager. And this class here offers three methods. The get is cacheable and put. And where this is actually called from is this um, GraphQL query response writer. And what will happen is whenever you have an implementation of this on the class path, then this um, GraphQL query response writer will be activated and called throughout the GraphQL queries. And the first method it actually calls is the, the get method. It says, okay, can we actually get a response? And if it's not null, then, um, then we respond with the cached response. Otherwise, what we want to do is say, okay, can we actually cache the request? And that allows us to have a callback here to say, okay, can we cache the request? Yes or no? And then if you can cache it, then we're going to have uh, another call to the put, which is going to say uh, response cache.put. Here's the response from the GraphQL query, shove it in the cache, and we're going to give it back to the user if they request, meets the same criteria, there's, it's, it meets the same cache key, let's give it back to him so we don't have to execute the resolvers again. And the whole purpose is to avoid all the execution of the, the GraphQL resolvers and all of the business logic behind that. And you'll see in the video here, we have full control and we can really implement specific stuff. So let's go ahead and actually implement our class here. So let's say this is called GraphQL Cache Manager just to start. So we're going to implement response cache manager. Let's pull in these methods. And what we want to do is let's add a wee logger. We have to make it a component and that's going to activate all of this. So it has to be a bean, a spring bean. And we're going to need a required args constructor. So in, in this cache, where I'm actually going to save the data to is uh, a caffeine cache. And I've went ahead and, and prepped that before. So I've just took a, a cache of maximum size 100 
you got to be careful here of the expiry and the size because you don't want to run out of memory on your machine and, and crash the server or maybe you want to use a redis cache or whatever so go ahead and grab your your caching implementation and you want to pump that into the cache manager so let's, let's bang that in no worries done so this is where we're going to be saving the requests to and the first method that gets called is actually this this get method and when i debug you'll you'll see what i mean and what we want to say is response cache dot get if present and what we want to do is actually get a request request key which we will um, build up together now and what that does is uniquely identifies a request with a cached response and in this example what we want to do is let's say return new request key and what we want to do is we want the, the cached responses to be specific to users so one user cannot see the cache responses of another user we want it to be specific to the user so let's say we want the user id to be part of the key and we want to base the the cache on the queries that they execute so that can be you can choose whatever you want here you can use any headers you like and you can use any combination of substrings of the queries so it's completely flexible whatever you want and if you remember back to the other videos i use um, spring security so what i want to do is go ahead and get the spring security header so i graph ql security config and I want to get the user ID header. And let's just put in a wee safety check. If user ID equals no, I mean, it should always be there, right? Then we want to throw a new illegal state exception saying, yeah, user ID is no. Something like that. And then we return the user ID. So now we have the request key and user ID. And again, I actually created this request key class and that can be anything you like. I just created it for simplicity before. So let me pump these guys down here. And the next method that we'll execute is, this, is cacheable. And that's really cool because you can put in here to say, okay, if the, if the request contains um, maybe sensitive query or it contains time series or data that changes all the time then maybe it's not a good idea to cache that or maybe um, you cannot cache it because of whatever reason or wherever you, the cache lives maybe it's just not possible or maybe you, you run out of uh, space or memory or whatever it is well that can also be controlled here it's completely up to you and your, and your flexibility although in terms of size and space, I would probably delegate that to the actual caching implementation and rely on that because it's probably better being at the actual source rather than uh, one step higher, which would be this interface method. So again, this is really cool. This gives you the ability. Let's leave it to true now. And if it is cacheable, so if this returns true, we're gonna head, go ahead and do the GraphQL request and then we're gonna store it so what we can say here is if the cached response is an error then maybe you, we don't want to actually store that so so we're not gonna not caching error response but if it's not an error then we're gonna say cached uh, response cache dot put get request key, request invocation input and uh, we want to put the cache response in there as well so what's this guy complaining about so provided object okay we want the request key perfect so here we go now that's going to be putting the responses back in there Da, da, da. so that all looks good to me and that's it guys I mean that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and debug that let's pump up that server 
Everybody loves a bit of GraphQL, right? Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. And we come back here. Let's go to Playground. Let's play the request. First request comes in. There we go. We're saying, okay, get. let's execute the bank account resolver. We're going to play that through. I should have put breakpoints here. And yeah, the response is back. Now we play it again. It hits the get method. And that's going to return the cached response because I've just submitted it again. So it's a value dot. So here's the cache response come back. Cool. We play that back. And as you see, it didn't execute the resolver and it did not execute these put and is cacheable because it's the same query. So if I play it off, I play it again, and you'll see it's just it's returning them cache responses super, super fast. And that's amazing, right? And let's go ahead and change some of the data. So let's change the ID to E and it should play the whole thing again. So ID, uh, so that's not going to be in the query. So if I say request, so invocation input, so the input, as you can see, is actually the query without the, the values substituted. So just relying on what I've done, it's probably not the, the best idea. Maybe you want to rely on um, something a wee bit more specific than just the, the actual queries. So if I say invocation input dot get queries, you'll see it's it does not include yeah the actual values. So what you want to do is actually look into that and get the, the actual values that are actually coming in. So we need we would need to go and find them somewhere like the, the sorry it's the variables so you would need to include your variables in there so that's going to be the the actual ID so that would need to be part of the key but you can get the gist of how this works and how it kind of saves the queries and yeah it's a really really nice feature so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and. Yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and, and write them in the comments here on YouTube. Or if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe if you like watching these GraphQL tutorials. It really helps me grow the channel. And yeah, we want to keep pumping this and sharing it with everybody and letting all the developers get up to speed and really benefit from such a cool technology. So take it easy, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.